Hello everybody, this is Kalanami, and today I'm going to try to go through like the whole entire process of coloring like a, a like this manga panel, for example. Um, I'm going to go through flatting, how to use your flats, um, how to possibly color lines, um, and four different styles of coloring. One is cell shade, the other is cut and grad, which is like comic book style. Uh, one is cell shading, and I already said that, but uh, and my style. So, yeah, I'm gonna guide you through that today, and I'll go through all the like, common problems, maybe. If you, if you like, a uh, have an index layer right here you'll notice you can't really do anything and when you use your brush it's like really pixely it looks weird so what you do is go to image RGB color so it was that index color you go to RGB color and now you're all fine so um, after that you, what you do with this lines or like the black and white thing is copy it. Control J is a shortcut for copying. Another thing you could do is drag it down to here to new layer or I think you can right click on it and duplicate. But um yeah you could just do control J. It's a easy shortcut. Um after that you do you change the the lines layer we're gonna label it lines you're gonna change it to multiply and after that you can go on a layer below a normal uh, layer style and you can color under the lines that basically ignores the lines so what we're gonna do with this we're gonna use our flat this layer is going to be our flats. We're going to label it flats. And now this next part, make sure you pay attention. I'm going to add white below. This isn't really that important. You can just add flats at the bottom. I'm just going to label this white. Okay. So your flats layer. This is a very important layer. You cannot skip this part. So what you'll do is um. It's just like all the base colors, like the skin and the sword, all that stuff. Um, yeah, so we are gonna go to that. We go to your wand tool, and this is very important. Make sure you uncheck anti-aliasing. Go to your lasso tool. And uncheck anti aliasing too. So, um, change your tolerance to 32. Uh, so something about the tolerance I'll sort of go through right now is uh, when it's at 32, it's a. Uh, yeah, well, the only way to show it is show it. So, if I have it at like 4, you'll see it's like way further like it takes it really literally on the outside but if it's at like a 90 for example it gets a lot closer to the lines it goes past the gray a little um, so yeah I think 90 is actually a pretty decent thing to have it at now you'll see there's little gaps right here what you'll do is, oh, another thing. Um, when you're using the wand tool, when you uh, when you use shift or when you hold shift and click, you have more. Like it just adds to the selection. So make sure you do that. I'm actually going to use tolerance for 32 right now. Is that a little too much? It's not what I want. And then to get rid of the selection that got inside of here, what you'll do is 
go to pencil. I think I messed up the flat layers. But, uh, yeah, I think I messed up the flat <laughs> I'll redo that. It's, it's alright. I'm just paranoid. Okay, so, get a different color, like this, and put it on the outside where, like, his skin would reach. And or just hold alt on the inside with your wand tool and click and it just gets rid of everything on the inside like the reason the selection was leaking through was because of that hole right there so what you'll do now is go to select modify expand by one pixel and you'll use the same color and you'll make sure you have no anti-aliasing for your fill bucket no anti-aliasing, no contiguous, and no all layers so you just do that and boom it's done it saves a lot of time so you don't have to like actually individually lasso everything you'll see some spots are left behind, behind the hair but you can just go over that with the pencil tool. Make sure you use the pencil tool. If you use the brush, you'll uh, have anti-aliasing, which you don't want for this because in the flats you select it. It like I'll, I'll explain it when I'm actually using the flats. So the flatting process is a little tedious, and if you're going to use your eraser, E is the shortcut and what you do is you go to mode and go to pencil this makes it all aliased just like with the pencil tool so it's basically just acting like a pencil but in eraser form so if you're wanting to okay I'll do this part too gotta color this red and by the way the these colors aren't final the beautiful thing about flats is that you can change it later so now I'm just gonna you'll see if I if I use my lasso no anti-aliasing I go around the don't move text bubble and I want to fill it with blue because I have um, all layers and all of this off, I can just do that. Technically, it would work if I had contiguous on because it's just one small part. But um, you, you'll see why I would want to have contiguous off because it's just quicker. Hmm. A second. It's weird. Maybe it's all layers. That's actually weird. Oh, there, okay, there's a white space here. That's that's it. So you'll see, like, if I have contiguous on, it just, I have to fill everything manually, like, just uh, in different actions. So, you turn contiguous and everything off, it just all fills at once. So what we want to do, I'm just going to crop this bottom part around a little. Um, so for the background parts that are like white like that, you'll just go over with your pencil tool and it'll look fine now. That's weird. So, oh, okay. Yeah, that's it's because there's a black line there. That's fine. So, what we're, we're going to do now is highlight the sword with the lasso tool. Now, lasso tool is a very powerful uh, tool. It's a there's a lot of different functions, different types of lasso. There's just three, but um, you can switch between lasso and polygono 
polygonal with a alt. So if you click down and you're dragging your lasso around and you want to like make a really sharp and just straight selection like the polygonal, uh, you hold alt, you lift your pen up and you uh, you or, or you unclick on your mouse if you're using a mouse you can do that if you keep holding it you just keep pressing down if you let go you can go back to freehand and also shift is, shift is adding to the selection just like with the wand tool so if you hit shift it just adds on and if you hold if you hold alt before clicking down, you will be able to deselect. If you want to use polygonal lasso tool to deselect, you click down. Wow. Okay. You hold Alt, click down, let go of Alt for a second, click, click it back again, and you have a polygonal for like deselecting. Since it's using the same key. It, can be a little confusing but the sword is a perfect example for using the polygonal because uh, I'll just go through it right now it flattering becomes a lot quicker with experience so I recommend practicing as much as possible see I'm adding to the selection it's kind of hard to narrate myself doing the actions because they do it so often. So, yeah, I have it all selected. And I'll select a different color, green. I make sure it's just very noticeable that it's a different color because that's how the flat should be. So it's, it's a really bright green might not make sense but it's it works so now that we have only white left or in other words it's just transparent um, we can just fill it with the uh, Jiro skin color this is a character in the manga his name is Jiro we can just fill it with that color and for his mouth you're just gonna go back in and select the mouth specifically and fill it with like a tongue color. It doesn't have to be the regular color since it's flats, but you'll be fixing it later anyways. So starting with the right color would would be good, I guess. Then you're gonna use white for the eyes. So and that's it. That's it for the flats. Is a little long. How long have we been streaming? 13 minutes. So this next part is a. I hope to make it pretty short, but um. Yeah, right now I'm gonna teach you how to actually use your flats and something you can do to sort of help you not mess it up. <laughs> um, like not accidentally go onto your flats layer. So what you do is you copy it and you're going to call this color so you're going to you're going to be coloring on one layer even if you uh well it's my style but like if you use your flats to separate it like onto different layers and then merge it back it, it works really well so i'm gonna go, go to your wand tool this is the like most important part about using your flats you turn contiguous and sample all layers off and turn your tolerance to zero when your tolerance is to zero you'll see if I have like a let me disable the color layer if I have like a very slightly different colored red here it'll select that if I have tolerance at like 40 for example it'll select both colors which we don't want because if colors are very similar like some things are very similar to white in a lot of manga 
so we're gonna get rid of that right there turn to all and inspect to zero so that's it we have our flats so lock your flats layer and go to your color layer what we're gonna do now is correct all our colors and sort of get a plan for our layout so his skin actually seems pretty fine to me. I might move it down a little. For so for skin color, generally you want to go from uh, about here. If you if you go to about the midpoint in the between yellow and red on the color wheel, and about right there, that's that's a pretty standard skin color. And after that, it can range from all sort of different places. Like it can, for darker skin people, it can be like that, or more like that, maybe. And for different shades, yeah, it's just, it's very, skin is very, it, it changes a lot. Like, you, sometimes shadows can be blue and it can completely change what's happening with the piece. So the tongue color, I think that's fine actually. We're going to leave the eye color white. It's technically not white realistically, but for my style it fits. Plus I'm going to add shading to it, so it's not going to be completely white. And for the background, actually no, let's do the sword first because it's not green. So, generally, for for these type of uh, like metal, I suggest going to this blue area around right here. Don't don't go too far into the green, but stay around aqua up to around aqua. I'd say about right here. That's a good like silver color, and. It just fills in. After you add it affects the sword, it'll look shiny and it'll look like a sword. So next to the background, since it's nighttime, we're probably gonna wanna pick a a cooler color like this. Yeah, yeah, that looks fine actually. And when you're done, if you have panels You'll fill the text bubbles and panels the same color, so you can go to your flats and go to a layer above color and just fill it so you don't. So if you use your skin here, it doesn't go under it. Like it's just always white. You never want to have it anything other than white, usually. So here we go. So this is where we get into shading. Be sure to lock your white layer here, white text bubble, and lock your flats so you don't accidentally mess with with like a brush. So if you have all the options off, you select the skin search thing. Yeah, you select the skin, and we are going to start with simple shell shade style. Shell shade style is pretty uh, beginner, beginner friendly, I'd say. It looks good. So what you're gonna do is you get Control J, and it'll copy just the skin. You do that, or a W, or like when you're using the wand tool. You can right click and it'll say layer via copy or layer via cut, either work, but just do copy instead because if you if you mess up on that layer and you had something before it, it's better to revert back to something that was decent or set as a foundation. So yeah, we're just gonna copy it to a different layer. I'm not gonna name it because I actually merge it down quickly. So 
there's there's different ways people can go about cell shading. Firstly, picking shadow colors for nighttime. It's not completely. I'm not the best at it, but usually you want to go a little desaturated. And make sure you shift your heat around because a lot of times I see people and also uh, if, if you're picking a skin color do not or if you're picking a shadow color do not go up go if you're on skin and like your skin is like yellow or something make sure you shift the hue down for the shadow at least because keeping it the same or like keeping it the same hue makes it look very st static in terms of color so Take a shadow, you shift your hue down towards red, not all the way, but just a little, and you have a pretty decent shadow color. Something people do is they use an, like an anti-aliasing lasso. They think of where their light source is. A good, a good reference for light source is a light cage. I'm going to look it up right now photoworkshop.com okay you'll see in this it uh it's very it sort of shows you how to shade the face if you're if you're new to it there's a lot of different angles from where the lights coming from I'll put this in the description below I haven't before in the stream but um yeah there's all these different ways and if you just determine your light source in this case I'll probably have it coming from the top right because that'll focus on the on the right side of the color or like the what you want to call it it'll focus on the right side of the piece I'm sorry I can't think of any words right now so if you you can use a brush or you can use a lasso which I usually use I, I usually get this uh, plugin called lazy Nesme pro it allows me to it's just easier to get smooth selections rather than yeah that's basically so usually self shading should be pretty simple don't over complicate it Make sure you get all your areas of shade. With practice, you'll you'll understand like the anatomy of the face. After after coloring so much, like you can't help but learn the anatomy behind the face the human head you're gonna go around and also um, I don't know if I mentioned this but you want to lock the transparency because if you're using your brush tool, um, it doesn't go outside of your selection. And you can, like if I didn't have it locked, it would go onto the other colors, and we don't want that. We're going to lock it and go like that. So I'm not completely done with my shading. I'm going to add a little thing right here. And on the ear, whoops, I'm 
Honestly, I should probably just make that whole thing in shadow. And for the body, I'm just gonna make it somewhat simple. This is pretty like complex line work, so self shading doesn't fit all the time. You know, you'll figure that out when like you become like when you do more things, color more things, you're you're gonna see that different coloring styles fit different things. So whoop. try to follow the shading of the drawing and you can oh, shade the hand too. My bad. And the more you do it, the faster you get. Same with flatting, same with anything. Lastly, I shade it right there. So, you have your shadow color. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I, I shaded right here a little. And you might want to add shadows from the hair onto the skin. Here does that. So you guys can. Okay. Just making sure you can hear me. I thought my OBS messed up for a second. So, um, if we want to make his skin fit like nighttime a little more, you can use color balancing. I use this a lot. I, I, I'm not really that independent as a colorist because of this, but uh, it helps a lot. Like my colors look decent right now, but they look so much better after adjusting it. So there's hue and saturation. If you hit Control U, that goes to it too. So if I cancel Control U, goes just pops it up. If I I can saturate it more, I can shift the hue. All that stuff. But color balance is a little more, it's a little different. If you press Control B, or if you go to adjustment, color balance, cancel again, just Control B. Control B is the way to go. If you shift the blue right here in the cyan on the midtones, it will look a lot more like nighttime. Like, see the dramatic color difference? You'll, you'll see, if I pick this color, it's like a, it, it, it shifted pinker actually, and desaturated a little. And this color actually took an extreme turn, it went, it went over here, and pretty much went straight down. It's honestly interesting how color works. <laughs> you, you'll figure out a lot more when you practice. You'll be, you'll become, you'll, you'll find your own style. That's like one of the biggest things. Is like, you find your own way to color things. So, that's one shading style. I did it for the skin. I'm just doing it for the skin because it applies to all different things, like all different objects. Okay. 
so I'm gonna merge them again if I select my flats and I pick the flat color boom I'll just pick my original skin color and now this next style is gonna be pretty much just a painterly I'll use a different brush for this one so yeah copy the layer again and you merge it I mean you lock the transparency so you can only color on it for right now I'm gonna turn laziness me off because I don't need it for this part it's just painting so I have quote I have Kyle brushes you don't necessarily need it but uh, I really like the oil thicker brush it it leaves a nice very nice effect and yeah yeah that's a very nice it has a nice texture yeah you might also want to use oil lush if you have this pack but if not I'm gonna use a different brush for this tutorial since that actually costs money to buy those brushes so what you're going to want to do is just get this circle brush and you're going to want to turn the spacing down to like 5% shape dynamics is on and you're going to turn transfer to when you want the opacity jitter control to pen pressure go to shape dynamics make sure you have all the same settings as me So, yeah, it has a, it actually looks very nice. If you turn the flow down even a little more, it becomes really smooth. So, you'll want to use this if you if you don't have the money. I'm gonna put this over here, and okay, and just start to get shading. Usually with painterly style, you want to go with more than just one shade. I'm still picking the same areas of shade. That's the like that's the concept of cell shading. So you want to you want to always keep cell shading in mind because it's a it's not it's not a bad style at all. It, actually works for most things but you'll see for me since I'm coloring black torch recently I found a style that works a lot more and that's my style now so I'm gonna be explaining that after the third one I do after the third style So, well, and of course, since you have a brush, you can always clean it up. You pick color, and you just clean it back up. Sorry, I'm not talking right now. I, I actually, like, if you're painting, you'll, you'll probably just notice, like, it's really easy to just go quiet because it's so interesting to do.
Actually, I haven't used the circle brush in so long. I usually use that oil custom brush that I bought. It's kind of interesting to go back to this. It's a different effect. You can add textures to your brushes. I don't really... I'm not a master at that, actually. I might make a video on it one day. But I, overall, I'm, I'm not really the person to go to when it comes to that. So with the painting, you want to sort of get a softer edge than the soft shading. That's the difference between the two of them. And painting, you want to get a even darker shade color for the shadows. Particularly on the outsides where they would show more. There's much more to coloring as well. It's not just shadows. You have to think about different light sources. Like sometimes I might even add a rim lighting if if you look if you look up what that is, or not rim lighting but a reflective light. It it like reflects back onto the shadows, and it can sort of lighten up the edge. Like if I did it right there. You'll, you'll see that a lot in manga. Like if you look at Fairy Tale, I'm pretty sure that author does it like probably too much, honestly. Some people can abuse it. Might turn the flow down a little so this is gonna be a little softer and or gradiated. Might go back here, add some rim lighting there. God, I keep calling it rim lighting, but it's it's a reflective light. Alright, pick this deeper shade color again. Basically, reflective light just bounces back to the viewer's eyes. It, it's what light is, actually. It's, that's how light works. So now I wanna. I, I think I'm done with shading. I don't really need to show much more. It'd just be unnecessary. So we're gonna shift that and make it blur. Now you have a has a completely different effect, and I actually like this style more. It, it sort of fits more. And. Now, this uh, third style is is a bit trickier. It's sort of hmm, it's not flatter, maybe. Actually, no. It uh, hmm. actually, I think the best way to do it is on top of this. It's a sort. It's more of an add-on to this style. So, um, what you do is you get a fuzz brush and you clip it to your skin layer. And you pick the shadow color that you have in your skin layer and you try to find your light source. Like if, if it's coming from this way, I will put the shades on the opposite side of the face. And I'll probably saturate the colors a little because they're a bit dead as it is as it is right now. It just makes the piece a little less flat, and you can get your brush, like your eraser brush, and get this 
get a fuzz brush as well and start uh, like turn your flow down to lower so it doesn't completely erase it but it it allows you to shade like that and it just adds more pop to the scene pop out of it it has I don't even know the word to use honestly it just makes it pop out I guess there you go Keller and honey had it with the with the fine with the fine words so that's sort of like the softer shading style that you can add to things I use that in my coloring style but yeah and I merge it and I kind of delete it all probably seeing me delete it and be like whoa why are you deleting that it's just not it's nothing too special that's why you can't really think of your colorings like too highly because there's always better and you'll find it. you'll find that you'll you'll find your own style so the the last style I mean no not the last this is this is more of the third style that was like a that was just an add-on to the other styles but this third style is actually more like cell shading but it's called cut and grad I'm going to do the same shading that I did with the last foot tool basically cut and grad is the use of a lasso tool and an airbrush you select the areas of shade and then you uh, go from where the light source is or like uh, like I did last time where I shaded from the opposite point of the light source uh, it's like that and it just leaves a really nice effect when it's all gradient and it's solid actually This is actually one of my uh, favorite styles. It's a uh, it's what they use in comic books the most. And I'm a fan of comic style, mainly mainly the colors because manga's manga's good with black and white, but uh, the colors are really in comics. That's where you'll find good colors. Of course, there are, are good manga because that can color very well, like Marvel level. But still, I would say the Marvel comics colors are damn like, like, like they're at the top you, you can't it's hard to compete with them all right and yeah I think that's it so you're gonna get a fuzz brush and pick your shadow color you'll notice I, I, I pick a different shadow every time because I'm not completely sure what I'm going to do. This style is interesting. 
it's it's hard shaded so you notice we're like when it's closer to the light source it's uh it's a bit darker it, it sort of fades or no it's not darker it's lighter near the light source so like the color here is pretty light but when you move down all the way down to here it gets considerably darker so it leaves a really nice effect and you can add onto this with with this again Whoop. try to add more shade to the nose and then you can add a probably like a white overlay layer make sure you clip it also alt and clip or like alt and clicking in between the layers that you're on and the layer that you want to like you have your skin on um, that will just clip it to it so like it's affecting the other layers but now it's not so if I use overlay and turn down the opacity it looks alright I can do some color balance after this make it look a bit better huh. yeah yeah it actually looks pretty nice and now so that's comic book style now finally we're gonna do my style you're gonna see how I think that this fits the story much more this sort of uh, I mean this is actually pretty close to my style because I use I, I use like all of the elements from these three different shading styles except I use different texture so we're gonna merge it back and pick our good old skin color that we had at the beginning which is about here whoops oh no I accidentally locked that I'm gonna do that thing again with the skin and fill it so I'm just gonna show you my brush because I I really like this and it's it's just like this brush is actually a part of my style I can't really go without it I've been with this brush forever you don't know our bond I'm gonna pick a different skin color, shadow color. Okay, there it is. it's a bit softer now, which is what I want. So you see, it has like this oilish texture to it. It's really nice. I mean, if you take your time with it. You can achieve really nice effects. Like a, I'll actually show something I'm working on right now. It's a, I, I, I like this is my style for using this method, and it turned out really good for this. It turned out good for Jiro here, so I'd like to keep it. It's very. Nice. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And we can add all of the backlighting and that stuff that I was mentioning before. Alright, so probably gonna try to make this video go a bit 
shorter. Yeah. I might have to rush my style here. If something has come up, but I'll try to get this to you guys. Usually with this I add a second shade as well. I'm gonna add it for the nose. Different parts of the neck. You gotta be loose with your strokes. It, it creates a better effect. I like. I like when uh, authors do that with their. I mean, artists. Just when they use like smooth strokes like this, it, it leaves nice effects. Especially if up here, you gotta add that. For the ear, and I think that's about it, honestly. Add more to the left side. All right, now, now that we have that, we can sort of add a texture here if you're really loose with your brush. That's nice. And I might even add like highlights just a little bit, even though the skin is so white, like. Basically, no difference in the skin. Actually, no. That looks bad. So, we're just gonna do the do the same thing with the fuzz brush. I go to brush. Find my brush here. And make sure you clip it. If you want to use your lasso tool so you do have to, so you're avoiding the hand, that's actually this would be a pretty good idea. sort of mixes with all the different styles if you look at it closely. So now that we have all the stuff done on that, it'd be good to add a lighter color over with a fuzz brush. Sort of lightens everything. Same if I go over to the hand, the hand it looks a little muddy. So, you're gonna merge all of them and we're gonna color balance. Same thing as always. 
This time it looks a little better, I think. Depends on what you think. It's all up to you. It's the joy of painting. Do, do, do. Good old my oil. I forgot to do the sword. I like where the sword goes onto the skin. So, like, I, I hope you learned a lot from this. Actually, I, I guess just one piece of advice is just keep practicing until you find your own style. I'm pretty happy with this right now, but who knows, maybe, maybe a month from now I'll be doing something different. I'll probably add on to it, or maybe I might scrap it in general. So, yeah, just... Those were some common styles, and I showed you how you can combine them, so. I hope you had a nice time, and have a good one. See ya.